Hi viewers. So this is Dr. Ask. Today I am going to teach the lesson O to Autumn. O to Autumn is uh, a poem written by John Keats. John Keats is said to be the youngest poet of all the romantic poets in English literature and he was born in the year 1795 and died in the year 1821. Along with John Keats there are many plenty of romantic poets in English literature and he belongs to the last decade of the 18th and uh, the beginning decades of uh, 19th century. And John Keats, if we look at John Keats biography and he was well known as uh, the poet of 19th century and who was very much popular as the poet of beauty. When we look at the other romantic poets in English literature like uh, Wordsworth, Lord Byron and Tennyson, Browning, Shelley and most of the romantic poets were confined with uh, the nature only and whereas Wordsworth is considered to be the poet of nature and John Keats is considered to be the poet of beauty and to Autumn is also uh, written with the sense of uh, five senses here that John Keats uh, has composed this poem and when we look at the poem the poem has been written in the three stanzas and each stranger consists of 11 lines but uh, all the three stanzas were not written in the same uh, rhymic meters they were written in odd sense here and when you look at the title's meaning ode to autumn what is ode ode is uh, a song sung towards something or ode is something uh, praising towards the nature here so john Keats has chosen this particular autumn season here to sing a song towards the nature here because and as we all know that uh, season is part of nature and if we look at all the seasons uh, there are four seasons here and autumn is one of them and when we look at uh, the cycling process of all the seasons in the nature and uh, the spring takes the first place uh, where we find the beauty of nature and uh, the next followed by summer season and where we find uh, all the fruits and the flowers and where uh, the nature is has been flourished also and uh, the next season falls actually autumn season and uh, the autumn season is considered to be uh, a kind of ugly that where we don't find the beauty of nature and it is very interesting to see that why John Keats has chosen this particular theme to compose within the three stanzas here when we look at his uh, the other works in english literature uh, there are plenty of poems which have been very formal and uh, Ode to nightingale ode on grecian urn and uh, uh, lord mill damson's mercy and these are some of the best writings from his pen and when we look at uh, the romantic poetry or the romanticism or the literary background of this poem and in fact the romantic period was started in the year 1798 with the publication of lyrical ballads uh, uh, written by two famous poets in english literature one is wordsworth and the other one is coleridge and uh, as history uh, tells us that uh, the romantic period started in the year 1798 where the nature has been placed brought back to uh, in the works of art here and when we look at the poem here, the poem is generally known as uh, the senses of beauty here. The poet has uh, come out with uh, the beautiful publication with uh, all the five senses have been co covered in these three stanzas here. And when we look at uh, each stanza and each stanza has got its own uniqueness here. The first stanza tells about the beauty and the bounty of autumn season. As soon as we look at the first two or three lines of the first stanza and we come across that uh, the poet has addressed to autumn season and uh, as soon as he addressed the autumn immediately he jumps to personify the autumn season and he brings out uh, the theme of uh, friendliness between autumn season and the sun here so uh, in in addition to this um, uh, we find uh, the bounty of autumn season where we find all wines of uh, uh, the full of grapes and the apple ripeness and the gourd fill and the hazel sweet nuts and the kernels and finally even the summer bees also which are trying to 
eat the honey from the late flowers so that is actually in brief what the first stanza tells about when we look at the second stanza the second stanza is very interesting where john keats has brought out the personification of autumn season and here how the autumn season has been personified is a very interesting thing for all of us so when we look at when we read the poem carefully here john keats depicts uh, it uh, as certain very uh, typical senses of autumn here because autumn is personified as a woman first and uh, there are four personifications uh, used by the poet uh, one is um, the gleaner and the winnower and the cider presser and the maker of the juice here so when he brings out these personifications and it is really trancing actually for all the readers how john keats has been called uh, the poet of beauty here so the first and second stanzas absolutely deal with the visual effects of nature especially in autumn season and when we look at the third stanza in brief it is quite contrasting to the other two stanzas here because um, the first and second stanzas deal with the visual effect and where he talks about the first three senses like uh, uh, the taste on the smell and uh, even the touch also but whereas the third stanza he comes out with the beautiful theme of uh, uh, the sense of hearing that is uh, the sense of sound here that is audio effects in the third stanza so here john keats talks about the music of autumn season it's quite interesting to see uh, along because generally we all believe that spring season is considered to be the uh, music season but all of a sudden john keats comes out with the beautiful saying that uh, even autumn also has got its own music and it is very interesting uh, to see where the music is found in the nature because when we read all the lines of these 11 lines in the third stanza uh, we find uh, we hear a lot of sounds in the nature and among these uh, poet has mentioned few sounds here one is uh, the choir of gnats here and the bleating of lambs and the songs of cricket and the whistles of red breast and finally the twittering sounds of these little swallows which make a beautiful sound in the sense of the poet here so these are these are the glimpses of the three stanzas so how john keats has composed this poem to bring out the beauty of, of five senses in this poem here so let me have a look at uh, this particular uh, poem that how uh, John Keats uh, has composed this first stanza okay now we look at the poem and between the lines here when we see the first stanza and uh, as I already told you that uh, it deals with the beauty and the bounty of autumn season uh, where uh, uh, he speaks about the wines of uh, full of grapes and the apple ripe and the goats and the hazel sweet nuts and the bees uh, which look for uh, sweet honey in the late summer season here and uh, let me come out with the first two lines here and uh, season of miss and the mellow fruitfulness close bosom friend of uh, the maturing sun here so the moment the poet begins the poem uh, after having introduced autumn in the very first line here and he brings out uh, uh, the sun as the close friend to autumn season here so what happens between autumn and the sun is very important for us now because uh, the previous season where we find that summer season and in the late summer season we believe that all the fruits will be ripened definitely due to the temperature of the sun and that's why in the nature the sun and the autumn season both are compared to be the close bosom friends and there is one more very interesting word here you see that conspiring him what is the meaning of this conspiring that and conspiring is a why uh, it is a gerund used by the poet conspiring is a, a word which is a gerund derived from the word noun from conspiracy so conspiracy means a, a something a secret plan which is being made between two people very secretly so that's why some kind of secrecy has taken place between autumn and the sun here because nobody can see what happens to the nature uh, definitely because it all happens only 
conspiracy because when we find the fruit from the greenish to the yellowish because you and i cannot see how the fruit gets ripen suddenly on fine morning from that greenish to yellowish that's why this is called a conspiracy between autumn and uh, the sun here but uh, as far as the nature is concerned uh, not only the sun here even the air and the temperature everything includes in the development of this nature or in the cycling process of this nature here most of the poem and the most of the lines in the first stanza deal with the, the nature's beauty especially the fruits and the flowers here and uh, all the trees which are having lot of weight here because when we find the trees are bent or when we find the trees are bent down it is not because of the air but it is because of the weight of the fruits here that we find only in the beginning or in the early days of the autumn season here and that's why it is mentioned here that to bend with apples here because uh, as long as uh, as far as the apple trees are concerned we make we may not come across in this particular area but when we go to himachal pradesh or when we go to kashmir we find definitely the apple trees and all the apple trees look like if you see the slide all the trees having number of fruits so that's why the trees are bending down to the earth here so to fill fruit with ripeness at the core that means uh, now the fruits are ready to eat because uh, we all believe that especially in this geographical conditions most of the fruits we like we prefer to eat only in summer season especially the mangoes so in this conditions now all the fruits are ready for eating that's why the poet has used the word one word that is uh, mellow fruitfulness mellow fruitfulness means very tasty and yummy yummy and uh, to swell the gourd and plump the hazel shells shells means here the nuts and that is uh, what do we find in the nuts we find the kernel what kind of a kernel it is mentioned by john keats he mentions that kernel is very sweet here and still more the later flowers for the bees that means uh, after the entrance of this autumn season definitely all the leaves will be shedding their leaves and all the trees will be shedding their leaves and all the flowers will be losing the entire greenery will be lost and the nature is also going to lose its beauty in the autumn season that's why the poet uses the later flowers here the later flowers means and we we could imagine or we could experience the complete flowery or the complete greenery only in the summer season but since we are talking about the beginning of the autumn season in the beginning of autumn season we find all the fruits and all the flowers which are left in the summer season here and still more later flowers for the bees until they think that warm days will never cease so where are these bees now and the, the and the bees are hidden somewhere because they cannot uh, uh, bear or they cannot tolerate the temperature of the summer season that's why they are hidden within the flowers they are hidden somewhere uh, they are covered somewhere in the flowers so they believe that uh, that summer days will never end that's why they are always there only and they believe that uh, autumn season has not come still but uh, as far as john keats is concerned here and he says that uh, summer over brimmed with their clammy cells clammy cells means here all the nuts and all the things which have been covered where the little bees are covered because of the temperature so so that is the end of this first stanza where john keats has brought out the beauty of nature and the bounty of autumn season where we find a lot of treasure when we look at the second stanza as i already told you that second stanza deals with the personification of autumn season and its activities here so what is the personification used by john keats in this poem and he begins with the first line here that who has not seen and who has not seen the oft amidst uh, thy store here th with thy thy means that is your and who is that your and here that who and your both are connected in the name of personification and uh, uh, finally we come out that uh, it is nothing but a woman because sometimes uh, whoever seeks abroad may find thee sitting careless on the granary floor
what is the granary here because uh, it is nothing but a harvesting season in this harvesting season all the farmers they go to uh, the fields and the crop and the reap and uh, and so in this context uh, the autumn season is considered to be just like a woman who is sitting very carelessly on the granary now but um, what is she doing now uh, autumn season is also considered as uh, dye hair year who is here the woman's hair the woman who is sitting on the granary and uh, if she has a loose hair year and once that air comes uh, and the air the hair keeps flowing like this just like uh, the tides on the ocean so in that way uh, the woman is sitting and the woman is personified there but what are the activities john kids has used to, about autumn season in this stanza is very uh, quite interesting uh, to see here because um, it is mentioned that uh, winnowing process first what is a winnowing that generally the farmers when they go to the fields at the time of harvesting but today we have all kinds of machinery and so that we can separate uh, the grain from the dust uh, without any hard work but even today also if you go to a few villages uh, we find uh, the separation of this paddy or the separation of uh, all type of grams and in a very natural sense only because they do certain things like this and uh, they stand on the top of something else and they start pouring from uh, the bowl so when they pour from the bowl and uh, the grain falls directly just like a heap and the dust keeps going away so that dust which is moving away is called just like uh, a woman's hair which is being lifted in the air so that is really uh, fantastic uh, reference used by john keats here and uh, one more thing is uh, drowsed with the fume of poppies while thy hook spares the next swath and all its uh, twined flowers here you see here that one more thing that uh, the poppies are mentioned here what are the poppies here the poppies are some kind of happens that uh, these poppies will give some kind of a drowsiness to the people in those days here so the woman's condition is depicted by the poet here as if she is induced with some kind of a wine and that is uh, very interesting and uh, half reaped furrows sound sleep here next uh, spares the next swath and the forest swine floors sometimes like a gleaner who is the gleaner here and gleaner is also a kind of a noun form and uh, generally in those days uh, after uh, the harvest season is over then uh, we find some leftover material in the fields so the people sometimes who go in search of this leftover material and they collect all this material and they keep on their head and they move uh, crossing the rivers and the brooks sometimes here and uh, so the poet has taken the word as a gleaner thou dost keep study thy laden head across a brook the word is used by the poet here brook what is a brook a small canal or a small river where we find uh, the way to cross it that is called the brook cider press what is a cider press here cider is uh, some kind of a juice what is what kind of a juice is it it is a juice which is made of apples actually because what kind of fruits we find at the end of summer season and almost all the fruits are ripened stage that means uh, almost in the rotten stage kind of a machine it's a very natural machine sometimes we find even the lemon juice also how do we press the lemon and we have a small uh, kind of an instrument we put that lemon half lemon and we press it and we find uh, uh, the drops of lemon from the bottom so now this autumn season is considered to be observed as uh, onlooker onlooker means as an observer that who is observing how the season has ended and how the season has started here so she has uh, here uh, autumn season is uh, given a lot of significance in this context because she has been watching with a lot of patience and tolerance uh, that is the end of uh, the summer season here that is why it is mentioned at the last sentence hours by hours here not does not mean exactly hours here it is the days it is the weeks and it is even the months also because the season does not uh, mean only uh, a week or a day or a month so it means even the months also so autumn season has been waiting with a lot of patience uh, with um, 
uh, for the entrance of this uh, autumn season well now we look at the third stanza uh, in the third stanza as i already told you that uh, john keats uh, talks about the music of autumn season it is very interesting to see that uh, how uh, the autumn season produces music in this uh, uh, context because as we all know spring season is meant for the music and the beauty and for everything but whereas uh, autumn season john keats has come out with uh, the music uh, that is audio effect in this uh, stanza here if we look at the first two lines here uh, he equations uh, autumn season that uh, where are the songs of spring hey where are they think not of them thou hast thy music too so he is trying to console autumn season here because uh, uh, we all know that autumn season doesn't produce any kind of music and it doesn't have any music sense also but uh, poet john keats was trying to impress autumn season here because spring is uh, uh, very much popular with uh, the music because we find all the birds we find all the animals make uh, a beautiful noise and the melodious music also just like nightingale and the other birds and animals so in the same way john keats uh, is trying to console this autumn season by saying that even autumn season you also have your own music too but in how it is very uh, interesting to see uh, which animals and which birds make sound and the noise because music does not mean some kind of melody music does not mean some kind of romance music does not mean something which is uh, 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 very audible to the ears or uh, catering to the ears and here uh, while bare clouds bloom the soft dying day so without mentioning the sunset because sunset means end what is end here end of summer season and the end of spring season the beginning of autumn season here so without referring the word without using the word sunset he uses the word as uh, the soft dying day and touch the subtle plains um, with the uh, rosy hue then in wailful quail the small gnats uh, mound g n a t s here uh, g is silent here that is gnats uh, and they keep mounding you uh, know wailful two words are very interesting one is wailful and the other one is mound and both have the some kind of melancholy here that in it is a kind of a sad music so autumn season also has its own music here in the sense of all the birds and animals here but let us find out what which are the birds and animals uh, which produce uh, such melodious music in autumn season here then in wailful quail the small gnats mom here wailful and the mom both words are very peculiar here and they have been personified with the sound of this melancholy music here among the river sallows borne aloft or sinking as the light wind leaves or dies and full grown lambs loud bleat uh, hilly bound hedge crickets sing and now to the treble soft the red breast whistles from the garden soft and gathering swallows uh, twitter in the skies here so at the end of this poem we find uh, certain birds and animals which produce uh, music um, and it is a kind of consolation to autumn season here by john keats so the birds which i mentioned here the quail of gnats and the bleating of the lambs and the songs of the cricket and the whistles of this red breast birds and finally the gathering swallows that means so all the little swallows we find in the sky they gather in one place and they keep twittering or they keep shouting and singing the songs even that sense of music is also considered to be melodious by john keats here so in this way when we find when we sum up all the three stanzas here and john keats has been vividly picturizing the beauty of the bounty of nature the autumn season especially in the first stanza and the activities and the personification of autumn in the second stanza and finally and he talks about the music of autumn season and uh, in the last stanza